The two of you are alone. You look into each other's eyes, talking, joking, and the chemistry is amazing. You get blushed. Is it the moment for a kiss? The idea gets your heart pounding in your chest differently. You close your eyes. Here it comes. Your kiss, which you will remember forever. Wait. What if you're a bad kisser? What if your crush will not like the touch of your lips? And it will turn out you're not the one at all. This kiss just needs to be perfect. Stop the time. No worries. We'll get you to that kiss to be remembered forever. I'm going to give you all the tips to upgrade your lip game. First of all, you need to chill. Relax and stop all the jumping thoughts in your head. If you're nervous, neither you nor your crush will enjoy the kiss. The secret is that there are no bad kissers. A kiss is the most natural thing people do. We kiss all the time. In life, in movies, books, songs, and paintings, even animals show physical affection in some form. The way bonobo apes kiss is the most like us. They do it for comfort and socializing. That's not surprising since we share 98% of our DNA with them. Since we humans kiss for the exact same reasons, the resemblance might mean that kissing is in our DNA. Second, you can't always control when the romantic mood comes around, so being prepared means a lot. If you know that a kiss might be happening, you would want to pass on the garlic bread and onion rings for dinner. It's always good to have a mint or gum to quickly refresh your breath. But don't use it as a substitute for brushing. We swap between 10 million and 1 billion bacteria during a makeout session. You'll be sure to brush your teeth before your next kiss, right? Also, make sure your lips aren't chapped or cracked. A regular lip cream keeps them smooth and soft. Third, stay in the moment. A good makeout session leaves you feeling on top of the world. Kissing is great for you. Kissing reduces stress. That tells us what we already know, right? That kissing is amazing! If you get distracted, you'll miss cues that your crush is enjoying themselves or not. Suppose you're overthinking it and repeating a grocery list of kissing tips in your mind. In that case, you're probably missing the point of kissing. It's okay to get a bit of a head rush and lose your train of thought in the moment. Kissing involves 5 out of your 12 cranial nerves and sends massive stimulation from our lips to our brain. Plus, you're flooded with dopamine, the same hormone that's released when we eat sweets. The moment is biologically designed to sweep you off your feet. If you're spending all your mental energy worrying if you're kissing well, you're probably not. Alright, you're clean, fresh, and smell like spearmint. Great! Now you only need one key element before getting your smooch on another person. But how do you know if they want to kiss you? Movies and TV make it seem like sudden kisses are the peak of romance, but it's vital to have someone's consent before you lean in. People often think that asking for permission can ruin the moment, but it takes practice. Imagine you're on a date with your biggest crush. The two of you are cozying up in a booth of a dimly lit diner, talking about how much you like each other. Your knees touch under the table and neither can look away from the other's eyes. They break off in the middle of a sentence and say, can I kiss you? See? Asking if someone is interested in kissing isn't just necessary. It can put butterflies in your stomach. If you're more subtle and want to show your date that you're interested, try dropping hints with body language. 55% of how people perceive you is just visual communication. Lower your voice and lean in closer when you speak. You could also try mirroring their body language. It worked! You batted your eyelashes enough and your crush is head over heels. Now for the big moment. They're leaning in too. This is it! Tilt your head right. Bonking noses is never a smooth start. Leaning the wrong way when going in can be mortifying. The best bet is to go for the right lean. And your date probably will too. Two out of three people tilt their heads right when they kiss. Don't purse your lips into a hard pucker. Sure, that's how you peck your grandma on the cheek, but your crush probably won't like it. On the other hand, cranking your jaw open isn't pleasant either. We use at least 34 facial muscles and sometimes up to 146 body muscles when we lock lips. 
keep your lips and jaw relaxed to allow the kiss to come naturally. When in doubt, mimic what your crush is doing. Remember, a good kiss isn't only a one-person play, it's an exchange. Look for physical cues like your crush moving closer or pulling away. They tell you when they're enjoying themselves and when you should ditch a technique. No one starts out as a perfect kisser, and every smooch partner is different. If you want to be remembered as someone giving the best kiss of their life, the key is to pay close attention to what works for them and what doesn't. Just go with what you like. Spectacular kisses happen when both partners are happy. Don't forget to breathe. In any other circumstance, that's a no-brainer, but breathing can get swept under the rug in the heat of a romantic moment. Don't be too self-conscious about breaking away for a second to take a breath. Breathing hard indicates that your cardiovascular system is picking up the pace, which is a sign you're nervous and excited. Your crush will probably find that flattering. In fact, you can use that pause to enhance the tension. Whatever you do, don't sneeze, especially on the first date. Unfortunately, there's not much you can control in that department. If you do feel one coming, say pickles. Some people believe that telling a weird word when you feel like you're about to sneeze distracts you and stops it in its tracks. Proof of this working is only anecdotal, but it's up to you. Which one ruins the mood more, sneezing in your date's mouth or randomly breaking off to say pickles? Here's a big question. What to do with your hands? It depends on the partner. But what you definitely don't want to do is leave them hanging like two limp linguine noodles. I promise it'll feel a bit awkward at first to find the right placement, but do what feels most comfortable to you. Think of your hands as the icing on the cake of a really nice kiss. If you want to go above and beyond the average smooch, add in a soft caress or hand holding. Don't overthink it. Just go with what feels right and watch your date's reaction. No matter how good the kiss is, all people eventually get bored. Want to extend the kiss into a longer necking session? Switch it up by using varying amounts of pressure, picking up speed, and shifting your focus between your partner's upper and lower lips. And lips are great and all, but letting your mouth wander away every now and then is fun too. Some other good kissing destinations are their jaw, behind their ears, neck, and collarbone. A playful peck on their nose or on the back of their hand breaks up the heavy tension. And if you're both having a fun time, your kiss will definitely be remembered. We always say that cute couples have the right chemistry. Well, it's true. Studies suggest that necking allows you to get close enough to smell your partner's immune system. Seriously, we can sense their genes. A person's scent communicates messages about specific genes that make up their immune system. We're attracted to others who have different versions of those genes, so there really might be a biological reason why opposites attract. Do you think you found the one? You're probably compatible all the way down to your genes. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.